More than 2,400 people have died in Morocco following a devastating earthquake. The 6.8 magnitude quake hit on Friday, September 8th, injuring thousands. Now, rescue efforts continue as many settlements in rural areas are waiting for assistance. I'm Stephanie Haney, and in this edition of In the News Now, we'll look at the damage as the country is in a three-day period of mourning. And we'll also tell you about the efforts underway to help Morocco. This is a look at the moment the earthquake hit, recorded on security cameras. This quake was the strongest to hit the nation's center in more than a century. As rescue efforts continue, that death toll is expected to rise. Seismologists say multiple factors made Morocco's quake so deadly. It is an earthquake occurring in an area with a relatively large population and especially a population where there's quite a lot of vulnerability in terms of the building types to earthquake shaking. And so uh, construction using you know, unreinforced masonry, the, the, the kind of more rural styles that, that sadly are, are not very strong when earthquakes hit. Um, and so, you know, we would have seen that also it's an earthquake that's relatively shallow in the depth of its source. Um, so this means that uh, the earthquake waves have taken less distance to get to the surface. And so because of that, they have more energy within them, right? So so a lot of things that add up towards making this such a disaster. One big thing as well is the fact that it occurred in the nighttime, past 11 p.m. local time. And people were at home, they were asleep in buildings that would have been quite vulnerable to the shaking and so a lot of people would have become trapped within the rubble. So typically the one uh, we had in Morocco, it creates severe damage and widespread damage within 40-50 kilometers of its epicenter. Uh, it produced more, less widespread, but still it's still damaging up to 150 kilometers. If you compare in, uh, in uh, Turkey, in Turkey the rupture created by the earthquake was 350 kilometers long. So the, the damages were spread over several regions. So it is the scale of disaster was uh, an order of magnitude higher uh, in Turkey, but still the one in Morocco is a strong earthquake. All the seismic activity in the Euromed region from Portugal to Turkey is linked to the uh, plate, the uh, African plate moving northward to uh, being, uh, and colliding the Eurasian plate. The activity is much higher in Turkey, in Greece. In the West, it is less active. So the motion is typically a few millimeters a year. But of course, when you accumulate this over centuries, the, the shortening is significant. And that's why there is active seismicity in all these Atlas area. This is linked to this uh, motion of the plate to the north. The unexpected nature of earthquakes is exactly what makes them hard to prepare for. But Verify's Brandon Lewis answers the question, is there a way to detect earthquakes before they happen? This X account with more than 50,000 followers claims it can predict when earthquakes will hit, citing 18 years of research. Some followers want to know if it's really possible to predict earthquakes. So let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Geological Survey, seismologist Lucy Jones, and Jackie Kaplan Auerbach, associate professor of geology at Western Washington University. Earthquake predictions would give people time to evacuate and prepare, which experts say could save lives. But all of our sources say doing that is currently impossible. There are some arguments that it may never be possible. There are some arguments, scientific arguments, that suggest that earthquakes really are fundamentally random events. As for that X account that posts quake warnings, Jones points out nearly all of their supposed predictions have been wrong. So what is possible? Our sources say at best scientists can estimate the probability that a significant earthquake will occur within a longer time frame. And those are things like in 50 years, there is a 30% probability that we'll experience this type of earthquake. That helps us with planning. That helps us know where to put our resources for, for seismic retrofit. Some states have deployed early warning systems, but these systems only send alerts in the seconds between the start of a major earthquake and when you'll feel shaking. So no, it is not possible to predict earthquakes. If you live in an earthquake prone area, the best thing you can do is ensure you have a preparedness kit and a communications plan for your family. 
with your Verify. I'm Brandon Lewis. The rural mountainous region suffered significant damage in the magnitude 6.8 earthquake. Remote villages were largely cut off from the world when they lost electricity and cell phone service. The epicenter of the tremor was near the town of Aigil in Lahaus province, a little over 40 miles south of Marrakesh. And rescuers are racing against the clock to find survivors in the rubble. Morocco has deployed ambulances, rescue crews, and soldiers to the region to help assist with emergency response efforts. Aid groups say the government has not made a broad appeal for help and is accepting limited foreign assistance. There have been offers from several countries, including the U.S. and France, and Moroccan officials say they're accepting aid from just four countries, Spain, Qatar, Britain, and the United Arab Emirates. While in Vietnam over the weekend, President Biden offered his condolences to those affected by the earthquake that hit Morocco, saying his administration is ready to offer help as needed. Before I begin, I want to express my sadness by the loss of life and devastation caused by the earthquake in Morocco. Our thoughts and prayers with the people of Morocco and my friend King Mohammed the seventh, the sixth, I should say, and his administration, my administration, including the Secretary of State Blinken, who is here with me today, is working with Moroccan officials on long distance here. We're working expeditions to ensure American citizens in Morocco are safe, standing ready to provide any necessary assistance to the Moroccan people. The devastation from the earthquake is hitting many here in the U.S. hard as they think of their family and friends in Morocco who are dealing with the aftermath in person. KGW's Ashley Graham spoke with people and business owners in downtown Portland about the tragedy and its impact and also caught up with one Portlander in Morocco on vacation. This video shows part of the 6.8 magnitude earthquake that hit Morocco. You can hear the sirens. It just like lasted for so long. It just kept like shaking. We we're just like, oh my, like, we just like kept looking around at each other in disbelief. That's Joseph Niedermeyer, a Portlander on vacation when the quake hit. Luckily, he was safe, but there were many people who didn't make it out. Just uh, pray for right now. I just like ask everybody to pray for Morocco. Kareem lives in Portland, but his wife and daughter are in Morocco. My heart felt. Um, broken and I called him as soon as I get uh, off work. Naji, the owner of Kasbah Moroccan Cafe in Old Town, did the same thing, picking up his phone to call his family. People start calling, people start like check, checking on each other, sharing phone numbers. Both say their families are safe but scared. You don't know what could happen. You don't know what could happen. The street were like um, full of people and they were panicking and they did not know what to do. Many Moroccans spent the night outside. They were like afraid to go back to where they live. Um, so they were just everybody in the streets waiting for another um, earthquake. Now a country suffering great loss tries to pick up the pieces. Any tragedy happened to anyone who will be there to help them. And Kareem just wants his wife and daughter home safe. She's like, can't wait. And me too. I can't wait to see them here in Portland. <laughs> it is nonstop worrying for the people here in the U.S. as they make contact with their loved ones. KXTV's Garage Paul Sangha spoke with members of the Sacramento Moroccan community to help them share their message. A rare and powerful earthquake sending shockwaves around the world. The feeling of devastation being felt closer to home, just off of Watt Avenue. When I woke up this morning, it was like it checked in the news, over 2,000 people. I couldn't take it. For Hisham Zamama, the owner of Casablanca Moroccan restaurant, a staple in Sacramento, for him, it has been a difficult 24 hours. Every time I, I see an international number from Morocco, I, I don't want to answer. I'm afraid to answer the phone because I don't want to hear bad news, you know. It's, it's very bad. Yep. Just crossing our fingers. For many Moroccan Americans living in our area, the past 24 hours have been agonizing as they're trying to get information as to what happened, but also trying to see what they can do to help the country. It happened at 11 o'clock at night. A lot of people at that time are sleeping, so they all, you know, get 
the brunt of it. For cousins Khaled Udriri and Zamama, they have family living in Casablanca and Rabat, further away from the epicenter. Luckily, both families are fine, but they received a frantic phone call during the ordeal. The first time I heard the news, it was uh, like 10 minutes after the earthquake. My brother-in-law called me and he said, you know, the apartment is shaking and I don't know what to do. I'm like, you need to run down, just go outside. And then I finished the call and I called my mom. My mom still lives there. And, you know, I found her already outside with my brothers. Worried more buildings could collapse. That image seared in their mind after seeing the destructive earthquake in Turkey earlier this year. Both men are still waiting word from their friends back home as they dig through the rubble to find their loved ones. The way the devastation is, a lot more help needs to be done. Udriri says the local Moroccan community is working together to see how they can help their fellow countrymen, whether that is through food, shelter, or emergency medicine. They also ask Californians to help however they can. But I have friends all over and that I grew up with in college, but they moved with their wives to Marrakesh. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want anything to happen to them. Following the earthquake, people in Morocco have been sleeping in the streets of Marrakesh. Many are left homeless and are living in fear of more aftershocks. Residents say they are in need of help. Every family here in the Jewish area, we need to help because every family here they don't have the house. It's, it's the, every every house here is broken. Old house, the, the side, the big man, the, the, for the middle, all broken, all. Old people, it has me sleeping here. It's just three days. It's tomorrow, it's cost four days. Not eight, not nothing. Old people, no. No sleeping good, not nothing. Old we. Yeah, yeah, and, and the night is, uh, is cold. This is the night, this is cold. One group looking to do their part to help is the Moroccan national football team. Players went to a medical center over the weekend to donate blood. The team's head coach said the Morocco qualifying game for the African Cup of Nations was postponed Saturday in the wake of the earthquake. The team extended their condolences to those who are still living among those who died and said they hoped they could help those injured by donating blood to the hospitals. As the search for survivors continues, authorities warn that the death toll is expected to rise. Again, that number is already over 2,400 people dead. Rescue efforts are ongoing as crews and the military continue to make their way into the harder to reach areas. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. Thank you for being here for this edition of In the News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney.